Sup, it's your boy PP. Like many of you playing this game, I'm playing it cause dang, I wish I had something to play other than Hearthstone. Yeah, Gwent's pretty good, but I want more. I got some things I like about this game, some things I don't like. This is the first of two videos, the things I don't like. Five top worst things about Legends of Runeterra. To be followed by the five best things about it, cause there's good things too. Anyways, uh, these first two things are basically just uh, balance. So they're not like real problems. They're things that are supposed to be there to get fixed almost at, like all the time anyway. There's always some kind of balance issue. So it's, it's whatever. Anyway, uh, number five. Elusive is a busted keyword. I think the best deck right now is Ionia Freljord unit buff with a, uh, as many elusive units as you can get. That's probably the best deck. And throw Braum into the mix too because he's pretty, he's pretty busted, but I don't think he's too good. I actually like him. I think he's like the perfect card. I love playing him. And it's, I mean, there's ways to get rid of him and stuff, but, uh, yeah, there's like, uh, almost no way to get rid of a board full of big buffed el elusive units. That's like, uh, that's like a strategy that there's no real counter for. Short of a, a whole board wipe, you're probably just gonna lose the game. Unless you just keep phenomenal tempo with, uh, Challenger units, you probably, uh, it's probably like an unwinnable matchup most of the time. Mostly because there's no way of interacting with elusive outside of the, uh, two factions that own elusive units. Which, uh, by the way, Piltover and Zahn heroes that have elusive, Teemo and Ezreal. It's like a joke how, how bad they get dumpstered if they're fighting against an Ionia deck with elusive units, cause any single elusive unit that Ionia has is basically a hard counter to either Teemo or Ezreal, which is kind of hilarious. That's why you don't see any Teemo or Ezreal decks, probably because, uh, why would you play them when you can just play Ionia instead and then, like, all of your common units in your whole deck are just as good as the heroes from Piltover and Zaun? That's great. That's great, Riot. Anyways, number four. The game heavily favors uh, big meaty creatures and buffs. If you're trying to ladder, there's only one, well there's two ways to go. The other way is uh, aggro, which is understandable. There should always be aggro in a deck so all the uh, little brainlet kids can, uh, can, can have fun when they play for five minutes a day. The target audience, if you will. But pretty much the only other strategy is uh, big meaty units. You're either going to be playing uh, spiders or noxus aggro. Or you're going to be playing a big meaty buff deck, which is pretty much every uh, other faction. Some combination of Ionia, Freljord, Demacia with a bunch of buff. And just putting down big, big meaty units all over the board. Uh, because uh, there's quite frankly a very, very little ways to interact with uh, big units. Like there's actually ways of killing elusive units, at least if they're not buffed. There's plenty of ways to kill them. But yeah, when units get buffed in this game, they're really hard to deal with. It's pretty much the uh, only archetype you can uh, that's valid outside of uh, the aggros. But uh, yeah, it's more like a nitpick just because it's balanced and it's something that can get fixed during the beta. So it's whatever. But these next three are legitimate, I promise. Number three, in Expedition, which is uh, this game's version of Arena, the first three Expeditions you do in a week... You pay with them for premium currency, or you pretty much get one free token to play it once per week in your weekly reward. It seems, but otherwise you're playing you're playing premium currency. Yeah, but otherwise you're paying premium currency for it to do uh, your first three runs, and every run you do after those three, it's a it's a free run, and you're basically just getting the same rewards as you would have if you're just uh, playing uh, ranked. So much like in arena. You're uh, paying some premium currency to get as many wins as you can in this game mode before you uh, before you lose and uh, get kicked out to get as many rewards as possible. But uh, the problem is you're only going to do three re paid re reward runs. Three paid reward runs. Uh, but you can get paired with anyone. You can get paired with anyone that's just doing a free run. So here's what this means. Some people who really like this game mode, this expedition game mode, they're just going to keep playing it for free long after they've uh, done their first three paid runs. So if you're Joe Schmo in the middle of the week uh, spending your spending your hard-bought Riot coins or whatever they are, 
to do some runs and get some sick rewards. Uh, you know who you're going to be playing against? Yeah, you're going to be playing against that one guy who uh, does nothing but play a shitload of, of uh, Expedition for free. Just because he likes Expedition and that's all he plays. And the people who uh, play Expedition for the rewards, the, who just want to do it three times a week. Yeah, they are going to be paying money just so that they can play against... Uh, people who don't pay money, who uh, who play the, who have uh, way more experience in the mode, who play it way more. This problem is uh, mitigated pretty much though, because uh, it only costs 300 coins to do an expedition, which is the same price as buying any champion. And in your prize, no matter how good you do, you're guaranteed a champion. So you're basically just spending your coins on a uh, champion. So it's not that it's not as big of a problem as it sounds. Just because it's so modestly priced to do Expedition. Kind of weird though how they did it like that. Problem number two. Time gated card availability. So in this game you don't buy packs. You, you just open packs as your rewards for uh, winning games and stuff. As your experience rewards. But when you actually want to pay money to buy cards. Uh, you, buy, you buy wild cards which you use to exchange for the cards you want out of your collection. And in the store, there's weekly availability. So imagine you jump into this game and you want to build, oh, I don't know, a Jinx and Draven deck. And you want three copies of each, which is the max you can put in a deck. Well, I'm sorry to say, but you can't outright build that deck you want right out the gate. Because the store has a certain amount of stock per card rarity that you can buy. And then it says, wait until next week to get more. So if you're an impulsive player that likes to play a bunch of decks, this is... A terrible thing. No, no amount of money is going to get you any given deck that you want if uh, if it's behind a time gate in the act in the store. The cards are kind of. It seems like the cards are modestly priced, though. I know it's hard to be more expensive than playing Hearthstone, but this, I mean, this game isn't more. Exp it's pr it's a lot cheaper. To me, it seems it's a lot cheaper to to build decks than in Hearthstone. Where you spend like 20 bucks to get packs just to make the one legendary you want. Yeah, cart, cart singles in this game are way cheaper. And uh, yeah, so that's a really weird choice. Uh, anyways, uh, problem number one. Cards not working the way that they read. Hasn't, uh, hasn't closed beta been out for several months, like six months, half a year? There are some atrocious card interactions in this game that make no sense. In some cases, it might be a case of, oh, we just want it to work this way while still having as little text on the card as possible, like in Hearthstone, which I don't like that about Hearthstone. I don't like how, uh, how the mana ramp card draws you a card instead if you're at full mana, but it doesn't say that on the card. That's, f that's pretty freaking dumb. So I'd really like it if that did not carry over into this game. I like it if cards did what they say. Here's all the examples, and I'm going to use the best example for last, but here's the examples, here's the, and I'm going to use uh, the best example for last, but uh, here's some examples. Iceborne Legacy says, grant an ally and all allied copies of it everywhere, plus one, plus one. So, to me, this means cards that are in play, cards that are in my hand, and cards that are in my deck. And not really applicable to this. It's kind of applicable to this game, and also uh, cards in my that are that are dead. But this card also means cards that don't exist yet. So like tokens that get created off of Brom, they get buffed from Iceborne Legacy 2. Cards that don't exist yet in the game because they have yet to be created. So to me, this card should say, "Grant an ally." And all copies of it everywhere, plus one, plus one for the rest of the game, or something like that. That's a little one, that's a nitpick. Uh, other ones. When Braum levels up from surviving uh, damage from combat, he doesn't make a Poro. But if, he's, but if he levels up for surviving spell damage, he does make a Poro. That's a pretty, that's a pretty big, like, uh, weird interaction. It seems like that's something that would have uh, been fixed in uh, closed beta, guess not. Uh, this one's a lot bigger. Some abilities you can respond to and some you can't. So when you play a creature and it has like a, a come into play ability, generally the really big ones 
you can react to, like the big guy that cuts your cuts your nexus in half, you can react to that. But like, why can't you react to the guy who comes into play and deals one damage to something? There's no way of telling which cards uh, go on the stack and which ones don't. Needs fixing uh, before this uh, so-called beta ends. Uh, in this game, there's a lot of uh, weird timing things that you'll just have to get used to because of how it does things. Like how it does combat and stuff, you'll get used to it. Uh, some things I don't like though. For example, uh, you, can do your, you can do your spells, then you can do combat and you declare your attackers. And then your opponent gets to cast spells and declare blockers and you get to then respond with more of your spells. But say you uh, say you have a big buff in your hand for a creature. Say I'm short of three, my board is short three lethal, but I have a buff in my hand that buffs a unit by three, three attack. You go all in with your, with your board attacking. And you're waiting for your uh, opponent to, uh, to block so you can play your... Uh, give a unit plus three attack so you can win the game but if you if your opponent doesn't block or cast any spells you actually don't get a you don't actually get a window to cast anything so if you're afraid your opponent isn't going to block but you got something that you need to do in your hand you have to do it before you you uh before you declare attackers kind of weird kind of a weird thing to have in this game it seems to me Seems like a case of them sacrificing interaction just so the game can go faster, but I, I don't like it. I don't like it. I want this game to be uh, less like Hearthstone and uh, more like Magic. You know, just find a, find a space in between. So in this game, champions can level up uh, when they're not in play. Because they look at how many times you did something, even though they weren't in play. And they usually, uh, they usually differentiate between this, and the card says... I've seen you deal this much damage, so you know that the card has to be out, and then you have to do that thing. While some others, like Teemo, say you've you've had to pl have planted 15 poison caps in the enemy deck this game, and you can do that at any time. He doesn't have to be out, and then when he comes out, even though there's still not 15 poison caps on the enemy deck anymore. Just that you planted the 15 before still made him le still made him level up, but some some cards don't uh, don't follow this rule, like Jinx for example. Jinx says level up your hand is empty. It doesn't say I s I've seen your hand be empty. It just says your hand is empty. So you would think if your hand was ever empty, that should level up Jinx is in your deck because it doesn't differentiate between having to be out, but it, but it does. It's either a glitch or it's a, in a wor and even a worse case, it's a case of them just putting less text on a card because they don't think it matters enough. What it does to me, it matters to me, Riot. Let me level my Jinx up. Jinx sucks and she should be able to level up even though she's not in play. Okay, here's the biggest one. Here's the big daddy of all of them. Let's read a card. Let's read over a card together. Augmented Experimenter. Play, discard your hand, draw three, deal three to an enemy unit. As a card game player with years of experience with many different card games, how do you think this card should interact with an empty board? And also, you playing this and choosing a unit and the unit leaving play before this ability resolves. Considering this game, Likes to do things in order, like combat. This is one of the very few card games where you resolve combat one at a time. You would think that the order matters, right? Let's do it in order. Discard your hand, draw three, deal three to an enemy unit. But as you're about to see, this game doesn't give a shit about order or what a card says. So if you play this guy into an empty board and don't choose any target for the three damage, you still discard your hand and draw three, which that, that part makes sense. Makes perfect sense based on what this card says. Now let's see what we what happens if we play this. We choose a unit to deal three to, and then it leaves play. Something. That's right. It fizzles out the whole ability. 
the little part at the very end that says deal three to an enemy unit. If this guy doesn't get to deal three to an enemy that he wanted to deal to, then he's he's a very sad experimenter and he doesn't want to discard or draw anymore. You know what the worst thing about this is? There are other cards that explicitly say do this to do this. And this guy doesn't even say that. If he was worded like those cards, he would say play. Deal three to an enemy unit to discard your hand and draw three. But even then, he functionally isn't even like that because he can still draw he can still draw three on an empty board. So it makes zero sense. And Piltover and Zahn sucks hard enough as it is. This guy should uh, this guy should work better than that. Just make him do what he says. Make him discard three, draw three, and then deal three if there happens to be a guy still there. Please, Raito, do it. Do the right thing. No quid pro quo. Just do the right thing. 